Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Emmanuel Ojako, campus president, North Central University in Detroit, Michigan. And by the way, congratulations on your appointments. Uh, our topic today is about academic freedom. And what is academic freedom? As you will see here, it is the right as an individual and collectively as a unit to conduct classes on the subjects you teach and research and publication without what? Fear of reprimand. Just taking this information from your union, AFT 200. Okay? How is it different from intellectual freedom? Intellectual freedom is related to what? Academic freedom. It is the right of every individual to seek and receive information from all points of view. Okay? Without what? Restriction. And this comes from what? American Association of University Professors. So, I have here union Okay, you belong to and the association of professors. Okay? Now, this definition, as you will see, has been what? Expanded to include what? All information as far as what? Privacy is concerned. How do these concepts apply to what? To classrooms. As a faculty member, you have the freedom to teach your classes, demonstrating what? Professional judgment and interaction with students and other faculty members. Okay? When you complete your professional period, you may end the tenure position, which is not a guarantee. The tenure position, you will have the independence to do what? To speak out on controversial issues relating to what? To the subjects you teach, and then have the right to challenge what? Administration. For example, on class instructions or new curriculum. They apply to courses or instructional materials to be offered at distance. Okay? Now, I want you to pay attention. Courses or instructional materials developed by faculty for distance are the property of what? Faculty. You own that. Now, however, the court have found there are limits to those freedoms. And they have given us, I use these two cases here to illustrate what the court has said. The case of what? <coughs> Rusik and Gamer, and Swizzy and New Hampshire are a good examples where the court has given what? Faculty does not have all the freedom. Even though it is stated in your First Amendment rights, there are limits to your freedom. 
this case here, in this instance, the court found that faculty does not have all the freedoms. The Supreme Court ruled the regulation of state employees to sexually explicit materials in their capacity as employees on computers owned or leased by state is consistent with the First Amendment. What this case brings to find, professors have sued because the state statute that restrict what they say, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, that they shouldn't use their computer to search or do research. But as you see here, you can take a look and read it, the court found that if the information you are searching, you are using state or the university, <coughs> internet, or computers, you do not have the right to do that. Okay? The second case here, Swizzy, uh, the court, this is a situation professors have sued this university for making comments in the classroom. They call it subversive comments. Okay? The court found that you cannot use your classroom to instigate or any political issues that may uh, in fact hamper your what? Freedom of speech. Okay? The university has a right that the university has the right to protect what? The academic freedom. Are the limits to the instructor's prerogative in teaching. You have the freedom as far as classroom is concerned to demonstrate your professionalism in teaching. Okay? The instructors are required to maintain what? Competency in the subject they teach. They should execute design academic duties professionally. Academic freedom should not interfere with what? Performance of their academic what? Responsibilities. They should what? Avoid classroom focus on what? Controversial issues unrelated to what? To the cause you teach. Very, very important. Especially when you are what? On the professional level. institutions have regarding what product developed with institutional funding. Institutions have the rights of what? Any invention faculty made using what? Universities what? Resources. Or funded under what? A contract of right. You have no right. However, as a matter of fact, to tell you the importance of this, some universities are now making it compulsory before you sign your appointment letter, you are going to sign, you will abide by this policy. You know, the way of safeguarding the freedom the universities have. What rights do institutions have to control the work of a faculty serving as what? Experts while employed by the university. Okay? 
Israel falls under the work, work to higher good. Okay? Under this theory, faculties, good work is considered work, work to higher because the administration provides work, specific work, supervision, and reparation of that work. Okay? Now, the work must be clearly defined and stated as institutional responsibility. So what we are really explaining here is that as a new faculty, you have this freedom guaranteed by the First Amendment. And that is not, there are limits to what you can do. So it is important you pay attention <coughs> to all these goods. These are your freedom, and the institutional has also has a freedom. Do you have any questions, comments? I am now open for discussion. Could you go back to the first or second slide when I came in? Okay. Second slide. The second slide said intellectual freedom. The first one is academic freedom. And that's what I'm saying here is the right of a faculty as an individual and as a collective unit, you belong to a union, to do what? To conduct your classes and teach your subjects without what? Interference by the university. That is the freedom. It is part of <coughs> the First Amendment right. The university has no right to walk in while you're delivering your lectures. You have to design your lectures, present your lectures in a professional way. Okay? And then the second slide we missed was what? How is it different? From what? Intellectual freedom. Intellectual freedom essentially is what? Related to academic freedom. <coughs> and that what? It is the right of every individual to do what? Seek and receive what? Information from all points of view. Okay? And then the information has expanded to what? To privacy. Any other question? Do you have a, a slide or copy? Copy, yeah, a copy of this is presented to you there. You know, you can a little bit change. Okay, very well. Thank you a lot. So, welcome. So, up to what extent does um, the institution own the right to your professional work that is performed using the equipment? Is it totality? Is it absolute? Oh. It is absolute. If you use the institution's equipment, even internet, okay, it is what their responsibility. They own this. Uh, Usiki and the uh, human case is a good example. The Supreme Court ruled, okay, because what the Supreme Court said, because in that case, there is a state statute for all employees not to use the equipment, even research, to, uh, to research uh, sexual materials. And the court believed that the institution has a right to maintain that. If you use your private equipment at the institution, you have the right conduct what research to deliver your lectures to do all the good things you are out to do. Now with the age of technology, how do you determine where and when the material was either researched on the internet or the equipment? Depending on where the individual saves it, how would you be able to 
shall uh, determine that <coughs> that material belongs to the country. Again, what we are debating here or uh, explaining here is an issue where you felt your yeah, free speech has been infringed or your 14th Amendment has been infringed and then you drag the institution to court. The court determines, number one, you cannot use the institution's equipment. Of course, you are here, there is what? An internet. Who owns that internet? The institute. The school. The address. Yes. <coughs> they belong to So, in that instance, you do not have a right if you challenge that. Okay? It is an institutional right to do what? To maintain that. But if there is a contract between you and the institution where it is expressly stated, you, are, you have that right to control. You really have the right if you bring your what? Bring your laptop. Use your laptop here. Use your own IP to conduct that research, publish it. Whatever you want to do, it is yours. Yes, sir. Oh, I, I think you kind of addressed it, but I just want to go a little further. Are you saying that that case, because I haven't read the case, okay. are you saying that that case um, notes that even if it's your intellectual property that you that you actually own, if you use the school's equipment, it then does not become your intellectual property anymore and subject to the school's intellectual property? Not necessarily. It is something uh, we are walking between the court, you know, your freedom of expression, uh, freedom of academic freedom guarantees you what? Freedom of publication, freedom of research, freedom of copyrights, all those that are yours. Even if you're using the school's equipment to do so? If you use the school equipment to do so, that is where if there is a law that prohibits you from using the school equipment to do so, you do not own that property. It has been expressly stated. If it is expressly stated, that's what this law is saying. The law is saying that there is a law. You cannot use what? Our equipment to do a research. Our equipment to do a uh, sexual matter. Is that case limited explicit because that seems to be in contrast to the intellectual intellectual property act it is limited it's limited it's got to be limited because that would open up a whole pandora's box yes yeah, it is limited it is really limited because uh the the <laughs> case really was a state statute it wasn't a for which University of uh, Virginia State University is part of. Okay? And since it's a statute, not particularly to one university, it is for all the universities. Sure. Now, these professors are challenging their freedom. And that's where the court came into that. Yes, sir. I want to go back to this slide. It doesn't read right to me. How do they apply for courses? Go back to that slide. This, this slide. Uh, it, it's not numbered, but uh, it doesn't read. How does this concept apply to the classroom? No, no, no. no. The, the third. Go back. Number. Uh, right here. Oh. How do they apply for courses to the number seven? Or instructional number seven? materials to be offered in distance? Yeah. Yeah. To be offered in what? In distance. In distance. At distance. Okay. okay, number five. How do they apply to courses to be offered in distance? And that's the case we are talking about here. Yeah, but I don't understand the, 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 the grammar. Yeah. The, the grammar. <laughs> you see? The purpose here is that they're using the 
they are challenging them all. It's just like uh, their faculty manual, whereby we have laid the groundwork. You challenged it. Okay? Here, what he's saying, the courses material developed by faculty for distance are the property of what? Faculty. No, but the, what I'm, I'm trying to clarify is that uh -huh. how do they apply to courses? That's course what? materials to be offered what? At a distance, right? So if you use our equipment, if we you if it there is a, a restriction on the usage of a particular research <clears throat> you are trying to conduct, right? There is a restriction. You cannot do that. Without is, the consent of the institution. Without the consent of the institution. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Without the consent of the institution. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm done. Okay. Any other question? Okay, I thank you guys for coming and congratulations on your new appointment again. Again, my name is what? Professor Joko. I am the campus president of oh. Central University, Detroit, Michigan. Thank you very much. Thank you.